Hey there. Welcome. We're going to talk today about the truths about healing from toxic relationships. So some truths, some tips for how to start healing, how to go about this, what to expect, all of that. So my name is Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you understand, heal from, and transform your life after being in toxic relationships or being raised by toxic people and narcissists in particular. So yeah, we'll get started. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. And if you need coaching or group coaching or peer support, always know that you can find that information in the main description of every video. So there it is. If you need it, you can find my email there as well. If you need, have any other questions. Hey, Chris, how's it going? So um, yeah, so we're going to just talk real quickly here about healing. All right. So first thing I'll say, one of one very true truth <laughs> is that healing, there's no timeline, you guys. There's no structure to healing. There's no method to healing that will be something that fits every individual. There is no timeline. It's not a linear thing. It's not a step thing. You cannot step your way through healing. You can't, people can say I'm in the anger stage. Well, what does that really mean when it comes to healing from emotional manipulation and emotional toxic relationships that, that what it means is that part of you is angry. Another part of you feels grief. Another part of you is over it. Another part of you, you see, none of it, it goes in a straight line. It's not like you're full force all in, in one direction at any given time. And so that's why we, there's no real steps for this to walk you through it, unfortunately and fortunately, because you see, the thing is another truth, I'll throw a positive truth in here, is that through this experience, you can come to a more clear vision and live a more um, open and pure, authentic life. You can become more aware of who you are and more um, and just more honest with yourself and open with yourself about who you really are so that your authenticity shines through and you're no longer living in a contrivance of other people's imagination and, and indoctrination into you. Okay. So yes, it is something that is individual, isn't going to be a linear thing where everyone follows the same steps and you get there. Um, there's lots of helpful tips that of course everyone could try and probably benefit a little bit from, but it's really taking what you have experienced and applying the information that you're getting to see if it helps some piece of it, okay? And then moving on, and if it's not working, take the tip and put it in a little like place in your head for later and try it again later. <laughs> so, okay, um, I have some stuff written down here so I don't forget, what else did I say here? Um, so yeah, it's not something, there's no like actual steps. There's no, if there, like I've said before, if there was a method or a magic way, we'd all be doing it. It'd be done. There's not. Okay. Um, remembering that one truth I will say here that may not be very popular here, but it is being very careful in what you choose to listen to and who you choose to listen to and how you take the information in when it comes to trying to understand narcissism. There are a lot of people. Um, with not your best interest in heart. They're not actually interested in helping people heal. What they're heal, what they're interested in is something more self-serving or popularity or fame or whatever, right? Because they know how to talk about a narcissist. Being really careful because the whole let's come to the next point I want to make, which is surround yourself with influences that are open to benefiting and uh, moving toward a, a more a healing for you. So surround yourself with people who are supportive. Surround yourself with situations that feel right for you. Fill yourself with information that gives your mind what it needs to know, but isn't sticky, yucky, pouring out of like, I 
do not think it's okay, a good idea to listen too much to narcissists talk about narcissism. Sure, they have a perspective on it, but it's the same perspective you get when you're around one. You know what I mean? So, and, and it's and it's feeding supply instead of taking in information for yourself. So be aware that if someone is trying to help you in this realm, that they're trying to help you, <laughs> right? Of course there is. Yeah, watch my videos or listen to this because, you know, whatever. But it's really to get the information out there, right? Not a self-serving thing. And you have to be careful in this day and age because social media isn't the most healthy environment for most for healing. It really isn't. There's a lot of nefarious stuff going on and there's a lot of people just, you know, fake, right? Okay. So just be careful that you're getting information that is actually benefiting you. Is that making sense? Um, yeah. And then um, another truth about healing from toxic relationships with narcissistic people, narcissistic upbringings, is that you are going to have to learn to trust yourself. And this goes hand in hand with the last thing I said. Well, how do you know if something is good for you or bad for you or beneficial for you or actually harming you more? And how do you know if you're giving supply and, or just watching? How do you know, right? You learn to trust your instinct. You learn to know who you are and you learn to listen to your mind your emotions and your body and that connection, because there are so many subtle messages always being communicated between that within ourselves that if we listen to it, we would start he uh, steering our lives in a direction of healing rather than in directions of people pleasing, uh, pouring out of supply, placing empathy on people and things that are not, um, reciprocal or, you know, toxic to us if we learn to listen to that. And so how do you do that? Right. So that one truth is that we have to learn what even it means to trust yourself and how to function in that. And that takes time. And it's okay. Like I said, there's no timeline. And you know what? These are all just truths. If you're nowhere near touching any of these, then it's okay. These are just truths. These are something we all have to go through. I won't say all. The majority of us have to go through the majority of these things, right? In order to find a different way of being, find a different way of relating to yourself. There is a truth. When you are healing from a toxic relationship or toxic upbringing, you will find as you heal, this is one way you know you're healing. Okay. This is one indication of like, oh, there's been a lot of healing going on. When your relationship with self is different and it is less judging, less critical, less harsh, more accepting, more curious, more um, adventurous, more vulnerable to self. This is what we've been talking about a lot lately, right? Is just opening up to yourself so that you can learn to trust yourself, to be your own person. All right. Um, Hi, you were coming on and on, commenting on a video and here I was. I was just a random, I think I'll pop on today. Okay, so um, let's see, what else did I want to say? Um, another truth is that as you're healing from toxic relationships, toxic people, whatever, you're going to learn to set boundaries, okay? It's kind of an essential thing. You learn to... You can't do things. Here's the thing. Here's the truth. You can't do things the same way you've always done them. If you have a pattern of having toxic people in your life, if you were raised by it, and that's what you know of as love, that's what you know as friendships, that's what you know of self-worth is to have the reflection of the narcissist back at you. There's no way you can do things the same and expect a different result. So there's going to be a lot of shaking and moving and grooving and changing that happens in your life. And it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to make you feel like you don't know if you're doing the right thing or, or you're going to have these giant weights lifted off of you. And in the process, you're going to lose some people in your life. You're going to, it's going to start shedding off layers of people who are not aligned with your healing and, or who simply can't let you change. 
people who need to control things, people who need things to be as they are, or you're going to um, make jump to conclusions very fast that someone might be toxic and you might push people away. And so there's going to be this awkward sort of wobbly stance, right? As you learn to uh, function differently and think differently and behave differently and act differently. Okay. And other, what other truths, you guys, you hit me up with, with anything you're thinking of. Um, it's a process. It's such a process. And everybody's uh, journey is different. It's unique. It's beautiful because everybody gets to be right about what they need for their life. How, <laughs> how many times have you been told that? Probably never, right? <laughs> that you're right about what you need for your life. Um, and everybody's going to have their own version of that. And so, and it's not selfish to be that way. It is selfless because from that place, you're able to give back to the world very differently. And you're able to give back to the life around you and people and the plants and the animals and all that around you. If you're in a different place inside yourself, the thing about, here's another truth. We're going to get, you're going to get really wrapped up in your own psychology. You're going to get really wrapped up in your own pain. You're going to get really, really invested in the healing process. Okay. It's going to become consuming and overwhelming or just whelming or annoying or whatever it is for you. It's going to be often I mean, this is a truth, maybe not for everyone, but for a lot of people, it becomes, I mean, something, and it, 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 it kind of needs to for a little bit. There, there's um, a dedication that it takes to continue and continue every time you keep getting knocked down, every time you heal one piece and you realize, oh my gosh, now my inner voice is still negative. There's no narcissist around here, hasn't been one for miles, right? And yet here it is. And so then you start working on that. And then as you're healing that, you think, wow, I've really shut off this part of my emotions. I've really done that, whatever it is. Like, so you keep finding other things. It is a journey in self-transformation. That's what it is. And you cannot, you just don't go poof, fairy dust, magic, and boom, you're in the ball dress or, or suit or whatever it is you wear, right? And you're a different person. That would be putting on a mask. This is from the inside out. This is from the experience of self that you maybe have never tapped into before, okay? It's from the experience of self emanating outward and relating to life from that place. What would that be like, right? And so how 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 can you do that without everything around you kind of going into some weird wavy line, like everything's different than I thought it was, reality? and then re-assimilating everything and like reorganizing yourself as it relates to that place. And I don't mean you're going to get selfish. What I mean is you're going to have the experience of what it's actually like to be you, not what you've been told, not what you've been conditioned to think, not the training and the nonsense that other people have put there, but what you actually are like. And so, yeah, that's a big, a big, big shift and, and it's a lot of change and it's going to have all kinds of feelings for you. And that's that's a reality that comes out of this kind of situation if you continue on the healing journey and that is your choice to do, if that's something you want for your life, okay? Some people like it a lot more simple and that's okay too. They just want to feel better, <laughs> right? Like They're just like, I just don't want to think about the narcissist. All this stuff you're talking about is way too much whatever. I just don't want to think about the narcissist. Okay. Well in that you've got to retrain yourself to think about your life, your path, right. And stop thinking about them and why they did this and why they did that. There's a truth too, that you have to learn to disconnect from that narcissistic person that's stuck in your mind, right. And stuck in your, in the process of how you think and feel. And you've got to learn to go, boom, I'm following this path, which is mine they're in the past and they're back there. That's a, that's a truth and it's difficult, right? Okay. Um, you don't want to be, you no more. It's broken. Oh, the parts of you that are not broken. <laughs> I get it. I understand what you're saying. Um, because it's a lot, right? And the parts of you that I'm talking about, the experience of self, you know what I mean. It isn't 
the parts that are broken. It's experiencing self differently so that you're not overcome by all of it. It's, it's like standing on uh, solid ground when everything else around you is moving. And it, it may only be the size of a, you know, quarter for a while. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, what do we have going on here? Right is the opposite. It's peeling away the mask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Slipping into your personal power and your and your truth. So what are some other truths about healing from toxic relationships that you're going to have to uh, recognize that everything you thought you knew about that person, about the relationship you had, about the parent you had, about whatever it is, as you uncover and learn about this stuff, isn't what you thought it was. And that <clears throat> that's a conflicting reality, excuse me, that you um, that can sometimes be really difficult and, and people struggle with. Um, let's see. And now I'm out of talking points because I only had a few things written down. <laughs> um, bye, Tanya. See you, see you soon. Um, it be, can be complicated when it's family. Well, what are some truths about healing when it's family? That you're going to have to make choices about the contact you have, whether it's limited, low, or none. You're going to have to pay the consequence of that because it's not one person, it's a family. So that means if you don't talk to dad, then you have to somehow be able to talk to mom and that's going to change and be limited because of her relationship to dad. And that brothers and sisters are going to have their own feelings and experiences and reactions to you. And so there's, oh, it's like you can step out of the, out of the mess of the narcissistic person, but you can't step out of the, the um, sphere of its influence, right? Because it's influencing things more than just you. So that's a truth when you are have a narcissistic family, no matter how you're trying to cope with it, that it's not just about the one person. It's about that person and every everyone that they influence and the fact that they make everything revolve around them. So yeah. Um, and yes, Chris, that's a good one too. Okay. It's not linear. We talked about that. Meaning it's not like you're like, oh, I see the hill up the hill. I go five steps up the hill. Look how far I've come. I've come 20 steps. Look at that. No, it's not like that. Okay. It is, it's such a mix of things that you may make huge strides in one area and then other areas are completely neglect and neglected and other areas you don't even know you need to work on yet. And then there's, you know, so it's like a big mix and there will be setbacks. There are so will be setbacks. Let's not call them setbacks. So let me think, let's call them changes of direction or things that are trying to pull our attention. Okay, setback infers that, uh, well, you're set back. You've moved back a couple pegs on the board and you are now not as far advanced on the game of healing, right? But it's more like there was a little spur trail and you had to take it for a while. And the reason you had to take it is there's more learning, there's more teaching, there's more knowledge, there's more healing, there's other things that have to happen that it will feel like a setback because you may be like, but I felt fine yesterday. I've been great all week. And suddenly there's a trigger and boom, I'm feeling terrible now. And I don't know how to shake it. And right on and on it goes. That's not a setback. Think of it like you're on a little board, you know, game of life, right? And there's just a little trail. And on that little trail is going to be some difficulties. It's got like thorns and rocks and whatever, and you're on it, but there's a lesson there, or there's a healing there, or there's an awareness there that you need to pick up, that there's something for you there. So ask yourself, what is it about this that I can learn? What is it about this, this diversion from my, what I thought was going great, that's necessary for me right now? Can I learn it quickly and smoothly without a lot of con without a lot resisting it and getting mad at it is making a secondary issue, right? And it's fueling the feeling of setback going with it in the sense of, and, and people say that all the time. They're like, go with it. Just go with the feeling. It never made sense to me. Just go with it. Just be in it. Just feel your feels. Just be in it. And I'm like, why? Why? Why would I do that? 
right? I'm going to resist for many years, long time. I never got it until recently. Oh, because when I resist it, that resistance creates energy. You feel it in your body. All you have to do is just give yourself a little resistance and you feel the tension, right? And the build of energy. Well, what is that energy fueling? The problem. How about I recognize that the problem's there and ask a question instead. How about I just say, oh, so this is what I need to see. What is it that I need to see? What is it that I need to see that will allow for some healing? Not what is it that I need to see that will prove how bad I am. <laughs> okay. What is it that, I, so that's one way to look at that, that truth that will happen. Okay. Um, Darlene is saying is talking about the past in a matter of fact way and not as a complaint, still a sign that you're holding on to it. For example, I was talking to a friend and I commented on something my dad used to do because it was appropriate to the conversation. My friend commented that I needed to stop holding on to the past and let it go, but I hadn't meant anything bad or good by it. I think that is up to you, Darlene. I think if you are just relating through it, then a simple statement of, oh yeah, I was just relating to your story. It's relating you know, and who cares what she thinks? Because frankly, her opinion's hers, just like everybody else, right? Um, but if you feel an emotional pull, if you feel like it triggers something, if the rest of your day, you're kind of agitated or irritated, not by her saying that, but by the explanation you gave about your dad, if, if you are saying it about your dad or the situation, and you feel nothing because you've disassociated from feeling, there might be more healing. <laughs> okay. There's a difference between feeling nothing. Okay. If I'm, there's a difference between feeling nothing and indifference to the situation. Feeling nothing to me implies I have disassociated. Feel nothing. I have disassociated personally from so much trauma that I can tell you stories that I have. I've told stories. I've had therapists crying. Okay. Crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? You know, what is wrong with you? And they say, it's not the story. I've heard a lot of stories. It's that you can tell the story without any, uh, sorry, I'm plugging in my, my thing, without any uh, a compassion for yourself that this happened to you. And it's showing me how dis detached you are from what actually happened, how disassociated from the event, right? And and so they're like, I'm also crying because I know you're going to need to feel all that in order to, in order to heal it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to plug my, my computer in real quick because my battery just said low battery and I will be right back and I'm still talking. Here we go. Okay. So, so yeah, I think it really depends, Darlene. If that, does that help? The ugly truth says Mal is that a full blown narcissist will never change. Thank you. There's a truth. Yes, in my opinion, it is even more ugly truth if they're just a garden variety toxic because it means they could change but won't. Oh, so agree with that. I so agree with you there. 100%. Frustrating. And in fact, those are the kinds that a lot of us are really drawn to, especially us INFJ types, where we can see the big picture, we can read and feel the room, right? We can get the, the perspective and the point of view, we can even slip into the non-empathic mindset that they have enough to relate to why they're doing what they're doing and see that it's their ego and see that it's simply them not wanting to admit to something, right? How many times have you felt like if you just stop arguing, Admit that there is something up here. Drop that something that's up. We could all get along, right? Because you can totally see it. And they won't change. Yeah, you can't make anyone change. I can't make you all change. If I could make you guys change, I'd heal you in three seconds, right? <laughs> Look into my eyes, <laughs> change, and then you'd be better. I know it's what we want, but it's not the reality, okay? So the reality, I'll come to the next truth here, but that's a good truth that we have to accept and allow the narcissistic person or, and, and anyone, sorry, okay. we have to allow anyone and everyone to be exactly who they are. 
We do not have to allow the toxic manipulation and abuse to come toward us, but we do have to allow the fact that they are what they are and they are not going to change and we cannot make them change. And because of the lack of empathy and the way their brains simply lack the firing in the parts of the brain where empathy would be uh, registered, right? There's not really much possibility of, of a desire for change. So, or probably there is no possibility of that. Okay, so what was I gonna say? Narcissist change, oh, help me. What was I gonna say? Um, so this is why I interrupt myself a lot. <laughs> it was, oh, it'll come to me. You have to feel it to heal it. That is a truth. You have to feel it to heal it. You have to go through what you're going through and allow yourself to be yourself and give yourself lots of compassion and lots of understanding and lots of validation without going into a victim mindset or a pity for self or a, you know what I mean? Like there's a balance and there's a way to do it and be uh, self-aware and self, uh, oh, that's what it was. You guys. Okay. Here's the truth. No one can do this for you. No content creator, no therapist, no coach, no clergy, no, no one can do this for you. You have, you are responsible for your own healing. Ouch. <laughs> right. And hooray, because that means it's completely self-empowered. Okay. That doesn't mean that if you've got people knocking you down and you've got narcissists in your life and toxic things or toxic situations or communal narcissism going on or, or institutional narcissism going on and you are affected constantly, that you're going to be able to just rise above it all like a shining phoenix all the time and be okay. And that it's all your fault and you're responsible. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that all of the efforts and all of the steps that are taken are self, their choice. They're your choice. And that doesn't mean that people can't help you. It just means don't, don't look to someone else to be your savior. You are your savior. Look to other people to be mentors and examples and helps helpers and guides and support and validators and friends, right? And even if you can't trust, learn to trust yourself. Here's another one. It's really hard to trust after toxic relationships even yourself. So there's something to work on. All right. Um, Chris is saying you really don't, you really do have to feel all the hurt in order to transmute the energy. That's how you get to the point that Darlene mentioned, being able to talk about it matter of factly. Exactly. Yes. That's, a di that's the difference. That's the difference between dissociating from it. What I was talking about is I had told the story so many times that it didn't matter anymore. It was just a story. Okay, I detached from my own feelings. And so to come into your feelings about it is a whole different experience because, well, it just is, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, sometimes I think it's disassociation. Sometimes I think I've just dealt with it. And I think, Darlene, you are probably correct on both fronts, <laughs> right? Like, I think you know yourself enough to know where it is. And but here's the thing, it doesn't really matter if somebody says something like that to you, where they're like, you know, you really should stop talking about this. You can say, that's an interesting point of view. And I'll think about that. And I'm happy to not talk about this with you. Because maybe they just don't want to hear it. <laughs> right. And that's okay, too. They don't have to, they can set a boundary in a weird, passive aggressive way if they want to. <laughs> right. But um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, what else? There's some truths about healing from this toxic relationships that um, that you're going to have a lot of people invalidate you. You're going to have a society of people say things like, narcissism's just a trend, right? And, and everyone's a narcissist anymore, so it's not really a thing, you know? Like, everybody thinks everybody's a narcissist. Or, oh, toxic, toxic relationships. Yeah, right. I mean, it takes two, right? takes two in a relationship. So you're going to have a lot of people in the world, a lot of people in your life invalidating you. You're going to have people who don't want to hear it. You're going to have people who do not understand it. You're going to have to face a lot of this alone. Okay. And by alone, I mean, there's always people out there. That's why we have peer support. That's why we have this. That's 
why there's group coaching. That's why there's coaching. Okay. So you're not actually alone, but you're going to have to face it in your world sometimes alone, right? In your immediate circle, sometimes by yourself because people don't get it. So my body is resisting managing everything myself. It's Coach Amy. I'm so tired and not sleeping well. Ooh, yeah. Uh huh. So what is the message? of that for you, Amy? What is the message that your body's giving you? What are the words that go with that? I'll wait for you. Um, and where in your body, besides the not sleeping, are you noticing it? What are you feeling? Um, another truth, says Mel, is that actually really beautiful is that toxic people like narcissists will show you exactly who's really in your corner. It feels horrible, doesn't it? But it is really beautiful because we're wasting time on people who aren't in our corner. We just are. And we're wasting our energy on people who aren't actually there. They are. I always, I like the phrase, um, uh, what did I say? Like somebody said something like, uh, well, don't be a fair weather friend. And I said, actually, I'm a foul weather friend and a fair weather, weather friend because I'll take the good and the bad, <laughs> right? But when you see people who really just are going to turn on you, who are going to believe the narcissistic smear, who are going to fall into the communal narcissism that happens, the triangulations that happen, who are going to have their own egotistical viewpoints that cannot open to another's point of view, that's the kind of thing a narcissist will show you in others and themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still waiting for Amy to reply. So I'm going to talk about not sleeping. So there's going to be another truth is that there's going to be a lot of physical stuff that comes up. Our bodies store the trauma. Our bodies store all experience in life. That That's how part of how our memory and our um, awareness of what we have lived in our lives stays alive. Okay. And so there's going to be a lot of somatic type of healing that needs to happen if you choose. Okay. Um, oddly, I feel it in my face, says Amy, and throat, chest. The message is I can't handle life very well. Mm. This is what kept me with the narcissist for the help. Okay. Interesting. Your throat, your chest, and your face. So your face, to me, I'm going to get metaphorical here, is the exterior version of what the world sees. It's the mask, so to speak, right? That you have to put on, think of the phrases we use, keep a stiff upper lip, put on a, put on a whatever face, put on a happy face, all of the things about the face and the facial muscles to maintain status quo, to maintain control, to maintain things just rolling and going. And, you know, so yeah, I can see that. And that I can't do this with a smile on your face or why can't anyone see the expression of pain and help me, right? The face is this expressive place and it's obviously, right? So I don't know. I would recommend, Amy, before bed, do some gargling and some vagal stimulation, right? For the throat, do some low, low singing, deep breathing with like a... Uh, like kind of release so that you get into your chest and throat and, and then look in the mirror and completely relax your face. You don't have to do affirmations or anything. Just come watch, just watch, let it relax and tell your face. You don't have to be anything except exactly who you are. You got this or you don't got this. And guess what? Mind you're right. You're right in thinking everything you think. If we want to stay in status quo, but we don't. Okay, so can we have some different thoughts? Can we let face align with new thoughts, right? Does that make sense? And then just when you're laying in bed trying to sleep, relax every muscle of your face slowly and with love, not in an anxious way. Take a breath. On the exhale, just think, oh, eyelids, that feels so much better when you're soft. And send it loving messages instead of the messages of the struggle. And see if you sleep, right? And see, and when you wake up, 
If you're like me at 3 a.m. and every problem you've ever had is in your head, go right back to it. Get into your body, get into your feels, and send some love to the parts that need it. Okay, so try it out. See if that helps. <laughs> but um, Flynn, uh, Flying, sorry, Flying Cosmo. I like that name. Topic for another time, perhaps. What do you do when a covert narcissist wife turns 19 year old daughter into her flying monkey, mirroring wife's narcissistic behaviors? Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Um, I, Chris, could you do me a favor and, and uh, send me that in a text? <laughs> So I won't lose it because I <laughs> check in the chat. Um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, if I'm able to get on tomorrow or Friday. So we do it really soon for you. We'll talk about what to do with the covert narcissist when you still are, when you're co-parenting with them and they are messing with your kids. Okay. And in that, in, and then we'll bring up your, in, in particular. So for right now, I'd say take some deep breaths and just keep being you. Um, and let's talk about that more in depth, I think. Um, is that work for you? Uh, let's see what else we have here. Chris said, more truths. Not everyone will support you and you will not always get closure. There it is. That's the one I wanted to say. Closure. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> you have to make your own. There, You will not only not always get closure, it's very, very rare. When leaving toxic relationships, when going no contact with toxic parents, anything with narcissists involved that you'll get any closure. Very rare. Why do you need it? Why do you think you need it? Why do you need that external validation from the other person to say, yeah, I did the wrong thing? You don't. Okay. We have to learn to make our own closure. We think we need it. And you're right for yourself in that moment when you're that hurt. Yeah. It feels like the right thing. But the truth is closure comes in different ways. The reason that works in healthy I'm going to say healthy breakups, okay? People who aren't toxic, just going separate ways. The reason closure works is they're not parting on the worst terms ever. They're mutually deciding this doesn't work. Or one's deciding it doesn't work, the other one's hurt, but they are able to talk it through because they're reasonable, <laughs> okay? The reason it works is the reasonableness of it, the relating of it. Well, nothing in your relationship with the narcissist actually worked through relating. It all worked through transaction. It all worked through coercion from the narcissistic person, manipulation, control, steamrollering you, taking over everything, you know. And so this is not any different. So simply put, the ending of a relationship is exactly like the relationship was. Let it be, okay? It's not worth engaging in. You find your closure through understanding what happened through separating yourself from taking it personal, that it wasn't about you, it's about that person's personality disorder and how they have a delusional world that their whole life is spent maintaining, okay? And, and then finding other things in your life and all of this that we're talking about here, all of these truths about healing and ways that you can, like you can seriously become the best version of yourself. If you would use so much of this to expand yourself, expand your awareness of self, expand your empathy toward things that are uh, positive, not things that are toxic, right? And 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 there in that, do you close your sort of this big when you when you get there? Okay, it's true. Um, let's see. Uh, flying Cosmo. Sure. P.S. I'm taking a new job, taking new job to leave hostile work environment and moving into. Wow. Moving out in two months. Excellent. I wish you luck on your new job. I hope it is a much better environment for you and that it works. And, and yeah, good, good work there. See, and sometimes it's, you're going to have, here's another truth. Sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that shake things up and change life. And whether you're right or wrong, good or bad about that decision, that's okay. Guess what? If Flying Cosmo finds this new job doesn't suit their life, there's another job, <laughs> right? Go get another one and keep going until you find the right thing. It's okay. Choices. Uh, truth is you're going to have to learn to actually make choices and that it's okay. 
you're going to have to learn to stop being in a state of perfectionism about your life after narcissistic abuse, right? Okay. Um, you received closure when the narcissist passed away. Not funny, but it is true. Well, and that's different, right? Because that means they can no longer come after you. They can no longer hurt you. They can no longer anything, right? And so that's, and that's different for each person. Some people feel other things from that guilt and whatever. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's amazing to see your elderly. Oh, I have to read the first part. Sorry. Another truth that was shocking to me was when I realized that narcissists are basically permanently stuck as the emotional level of a little kid due to the severe arrested development. Uh-huh. Amazing to see your elderly narcissistic father throw a tantrum like a toddler. Oh, yeah. That's a truth about them. It's not a truth about healing, but it's a truth about them, right? It's a truth about... Uh, it's a, You know what that is? That's an example of one truth about healing is the understanding and awareness of how narcissistic traits manifest and how they, how narcissists behave. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and in that you find healing because in that you can separate from it being personal. It's not your fault. Good old daddy is throwing a tantrum like a two-year-old. It's that's his problem that at 90 years old, he hasn't figured out that he shouldn't do that. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, Chris is saying codependents have that issue. They thinking we need validation from others. We don't. We can validate ourselves just by knowing ourselves and being in alignment with our own values. Absolutely. This is, that's a truth. <laughs> Not sure if I already said this. Another truth is staying with the narcissist won't help them. Ooh, really good. It won't heal their past or delete it. It won't help heal them now. So stay. Stay, so don't stay out of pity. That's right. It's not your job in the first place. And even if it were, even if you took it on like a job, you know, it, it wouldn't do anything. It's not, yeah, it's not your fault. It's not, it's not up to you. And you know, just like, just like I said, I mean, look how hard it is. So I'm assuming everyone here, let's just raise a hand, share of hands. Okay. Who here wants healing? <laughs> Who here wants your life to be flowing in a direction of positivity, growth, expansion, happiness, and joy? I'm going to, you don't actually have to raise your hand, but I'm going to assume it's like lots and lots and lots of you. Okay. Now, can I make you do it? I can offer you suggestions. I can stay as positive as I can with <laughs> my own presence, right? I can give examples. I can be an example. I can I can stick by you, right? From here. But here's the thing. If you're going to if if you're a person that is going to pull it down, isn't going to uh like if you're a narcissist, let's put it that way. And you're going to try and control it all and try and manipulate the person who's helping you manipulate me into making me feel as bad as you do. If a narcissist, you know, because this is what they do. How in the heck? Right. And even when even with us here. It, it's a, it's not my responsibility or job, right, to make you feel better, to fix your life. Never was, never will be. And. Even as a coach, it's only my job as a coach to help hold a shiny, beautiful mirror of who you are and help you find your own questions and find your own direction, right? Help you with questions, with examples, with thoughts and ideas, not by telling you what to do and not by and not by fixing it for you. A narcissist, they when you're with them, they're expecting you to take the emotional weight of the whole relationship, shove it on your back, carry it around and let it weigh you down and weigh you down and weigh you down because they don't want to take accountability and they don't want to make changes. So it's never going to happen. Okay. Um, let's see. Forgiving myself for staying and trying so long. I must have been for a reason. It must have been for a reason. Hopefully not wasted time. You can look at it as wasted time or you can look at it as time spent. <laughs> right. And 
it is okay so there's a truth the most tragic thing about narcissists and being in relationships with them or having them as parents or whatever is the time spent wasted right on things that can never get better so new perspective here what a what about that was uh, where's the truth for you in that? You spent a lot of time, yes, wasted only because it never, you know, it doesn't come to any any positive results. But you, what, what did you learn from it? What have you gained from it? Where have you grown from it? What are the pains that you've had and the, and the experiences that you've had that you are now seeing completely differently? And where's the compassion for yourself in that situation? So, you know, and, and it's, it's sort of, that's another topic, regret. Let's talk about that soon. I'll try to remember that one too. Okay. Cause that's a good one. All right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna have to go in a second here. So if anything else, you guys let me know real quick and, uh, uh Oh, my phone's going to ring. Do not ring. Thank you. All right. Um, I consider that time part of the journey. Exactly. That's what I was getting at. I can use it to my advantage and for the advantage of others. Yes, absolutely. Uh-huh. It's just, it, yeah, that's, I, I really want to talk about that because that is a sticky point for a lot of us. I got to remember that one. Time spent and regret because <laughs> that's, yeah, um, maybe we should do that one this week too, if there's enough days in this week. <laughs> Or next week. Okay. All right, you guys. I should probably head out. Um, yeah, try practicing that, Amy. And yeah, I know you're you're it's overwhelming. And you're you're Amy, you're dealing with, you're facing now on your own the truths of, or not the truths, the um the resonating sound, right? Of the indoctrination in your mind and the lies that were put there that you can't do it, that you're not enough, that blah, 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 right. And so now kindness the heck out of yourself and to say, yeah, you were taught that. Thanks for, you know what brain you were taught that you were taught that you can't take care of yourself. You're right. You were taught that uh, you are not the enemy. Okay. The thing is, there's another way you want to find it. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? There are other ways to look at this. Would you like to find it? Because if you're trying to think from that expression and that feeling, there's no thinking from that. There's only more of the same. So being kind, re, uh, what's the word? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. 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 Okay. Mal's last thing here. Interesting truth was when I realized how these people don't actually get anywhere good in life because of the way they act. Yeah. They just try to, well, here's the thing. They just try to hide, just try hard to hide what a mess their life really is. The thing is, and this is true for us as well when we're healing. Okay. This is my experience that there is a psychology. We all have our own psychology, right? And Basically, that's our ego, right? And ours is provable. Ours is created from the things that happened. And the beliefs that get set into that are like set in this groove in us from repeated experiences because of the CPTSD, right? And well, the CPTSD is telling us that these repeat experiences are real. That's who I am. And I can't, and this is part of why we can't make change super easily either, because we're trying to make change from that place. That place only knows what it already has known. It doesn't know the unknown. That place, that egotist, right, that is that place is um, we have the capacity to override and to see things differently because we have a connection with compassion. We have a connection with empathy and we have a connection with the allowance of expansion, the allowance to say, I am right. And I don't know everything, <laughs> right? Like, and then, and laugh about it. We have that. Narcissists do not have that. Okay. Because 
They're like, no, this is how it is. This is my reality. And I am going to prove that reality. And I'm going to make everyone else dance around me to reinforce it for me over and over. So they're trying to take control of the things that they really should be working to heal and manipulate them to reflect a different reality around them. You're amazing. You're this, you're that when really they're an insecure, insignificant feeling human being. Right. And that's why it doesn't work. That's why it can't work because you can only manipulate people so long before it breaks them down. And then people are no longer giving them the supply of, oh my gosh, who are you? Right. They're giving them the supply of, oh my God, who are you? Right. Because that's how it, that's how it works. You can only dance in someone else's delusion for so long before you get lost. So yeah, that's another topic, but there we go. Okay. Um, and regrets partner self-blame. Okay. I got to write that down before I forget. So I'm going to head out. I think I have someone I need to speak to now anyway. So you guys, if you need anything, coaching, group coaching, peer support, please go to the main description of every video. You'll find lots of links there. If you don't find what you're looking for, shoot me an email. There's a link there as well. Um, or just leave a comment and I will gladly respond. If you like anything you're hearing here, share the videos, you guys whatever, spread the word and, um, leave a comment and I will talk to you over in the comments later on. You guys take care and I will see you maybe tomorrow or the next day. And we'll talk about the question that I can't remember now, but it will be in my text messages. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'll see you guys later. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.